Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another evangelistic service. This evening, we'll begin our chorus singing with number 43, If You Know the Lord is Keeping You. to the medley 44, 45, and 46.
76, I know who holds the future.
close off with number 111, and we're going to ask you all to stand, the family of God. Since we all are a family, we're going to ask everyone to stand. Once again, a warm Christian welcome to each and every one, especially to our visitors and to our online audience. We pray that something will be, that will be said and done tonight will be a blessing to each one. We want to thank the Praise and Worship group for those lovely choruses. Yes. They set the tune for a beautiful service. Let us stand as we acknowledge the presence of the Lord and remain standing for our opening congregation song, which will be page 113 from our hymnal. I'll call on Brother Dwayne to open the service in prayer and Sister Olita to the congregation song once he's finished. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for this golden privilege to be in the house of God. We thank you for the beautiful day that you gave us, for the inspiring service this morning, for your presence being so real with us. God is still with his people. Thank you so much, Lord, that even in these troubled times, you're still with us, and we can depend on you, Lord, and your help is dependable. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Father God, as we enter this another divine service, we set ourselves apart, Lord, acknowledging that we need your help. We don't want to do anything, Lord, without you. We want you to walk up and down this place. Bless every heart, everyone that will be here tonight. We pray that your presence will be ever so real. Remember your man's servant once more. Rest your mighty hand upon him. Speak through him tonight. Give him the words that he may speak as an oracle of God. Give him a special anointing from heaven. For adventure, Lord, some precious soul will cry out, as that old Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? Bless and encourage and uplift this congregation. If anyone is cast down, lift them up tonight, Lord. If anyone is discouraged, encourage their heart. Give them new strength and courage for the journey ahead. Bless us, Lord, as we continue on. Be with Sister Karen as she chair the service. Be with the choirs they sing, everyone that will have a part. May this service redound to the glory of God. We ask these things in Jesus' name.
Amen. There's certainly power in the blood. Yeah. There's a song that the sisters sing, I claim the blood. Well, if you claim the blood, then you'll see exactly how much power there is in this blood of Jesus. We will go right into our song service, and we will call on Sister Bev to do a solo for us.
precious memories. Yeah. You know, in order to have memories, you have to create them. Yeah. So each day that we wake up, we must be focused on creating something that will better our lives because memories can hold us. When we have created good memories, it can hold us in the hard times. Thank you, ladies, Sister Bev and Sister Maxine. Sister Leela will now do a solo for us. are becoming duets <laughs> ride out your storm yeah. is 
In times that leaves, we can take comfort in the word where God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Does it matter if you're in the mountain or in the valley or how great your storm is? God is always there with you. Well, I think this one will be a, um, a solo. Our next selection is brother by, by Brother Isaac. church. I would like to um, just say a few words. Uh, those of you online that are watching the Sunday school session, this morning we had an abrupt um, cancellation as I was doing the, the lesson, but I understand there has been some interruption with the internet service in the area that I I live that I was doing it from so that's the reason why that was abruptly finished this morning and as I'm about to sing this song please listen carefully to the message in this song it's asking a very serious question and it is something that each and every one of us need to pay attention to you know life is beautiful and God has given us the abilities to work and to achieve things in our lives. But it was not ever his intention for us to use those things to keep us away from God. But instead for us to embrace him and to let him have his way in our lives. The title of this song is, If I Gain the world. If I gain the world, but not the Savior, were my life worth living for a day, could my yearning heart find rest and calm? In the things that soon must pass away If I gain the world But not the Savior Would my gain be worth The lifelong strife Or all and love in fullest measure and the name referred for far and near yet no hope beyond no harbor waiting where my storm tossed vessel I could stay if I gain the world, but not the Savior, who endured the cross and died for me, could then all the world afford without a Savior. Mid the sins and sorrows here below, and 
eternity how dark without him only night and tears and endless to die, how would it be? Oh, to face the valley, gloom without him, and without him on eternity. Oh, the joy of having all in Jesus. What a balm the broken heart to heal. Ne'er a sin so great that he'll forgive it. Nor a sorrow that he does not feel. If I have but Jesus, only Jesus, nothing else in all the world beside. Oh, then everything is mine and Jesus. Thank you, Brother Isaac. Um, Matthew 16 um, and 26 said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall he give in exchange for his soul? Nothing in this world. Nothing. No, much, no matter how much pleasure we have, it'll all pass away. Our soul is the most important thing. We'll pause now to have a responsive reading, and it will be taken from the back of our hymnal, page 462, number 28, Christ, our healer, and Sister Vita will lead us. Good night, church. Christ, our healer. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. For he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in, in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. In so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, he shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of righteous man availeth much. 
May the Lord continue to bless the reading of his holy words. Tonight, if you are here with sin in your heart, you are sick. Jesus can heal you and make you whole again. He can make your heart white as snow. Let us sit as the congregation sing page 158, Whiter Than Snow, and Sister Lida would lead us. Brother O'Leary will now sing for us, Have You Counted the Cost? Right again, once again, we thank the Lord for 
bringing us out and giving us the strength to come to church again tonight, to give him thanks for the day. There's a line that is strong by rejecting our Lord, where the call of His Spirit is long, and you hurry along with the pleasure. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, though you gain the whole world for. Even now it may be that the line you have crossed, have you counted, have you counted the call? You may parted your home. Of eternity mourn for the moment of joy and the more for the glitters of sin and the things it will win. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, though you gain. is open to you hear the depths of his love you exalt won't you come and be healed won't you whisper I I have counted, I have counted the cost. Have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, though you gain. Now it may be that the line you have crossed, I have counted, I have counted the
Thank you, Brother Olivier. Yes, one way or the other, we each have counted that cause. Before the choir brings our last selections, I'll give the announcements. On uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we'll have our prayer, prayer and praise service. Saturday at 5.30, we will have our prayer meeting. We, everyone is encouraged to attend, to pray for the community, to pray for the church, and most of all, to pray for our Sunday services, which is Sunday school at 9.45, morning worship at 11, and our evangelistic service at 7, with chorus singing at 6.45. Once again, a reminder that our offering boxes are now placed on the wall as you enter the church or on the side here. If you not have not done so already and you would like to leave an offering, please do it on your way out and may the Lord bless you as you give to his service. The choir will now close our song service with Come Unto Me.
I want to thank the choir for that beautiful selection. And the message is, come unto me and I will give you rest. We now come to the most important, important part of the service. And it gives me great pleasure to call on our pastor, Brother James Arch. Let us support him as he gives to us what the Lord has laid on his heart. Brother James. I am very thankful to be back in service tonight to see those of you that are here. My mission here tonight is to tell you the story of Jesus and his redeeming love. There's a song which says, though millions have come, there is still room for some. There is room at the cross for you. Sister Rebecca, uh, we'll be having uh, Bible study at 6 o'clock Wednesday evening in, in addition to the announcement that the sister just made. 6 o'clock on Wednesday evening. I want you to listen very closely to what I have to say tonight because I'm not going to be very long. By the help of the Lord, I will convey to you what he has conveyed to me. Amen. I wonder who's looking for a change of life. A change of life. Is there anybody else left in the world that's looking for a change of life? 54 years ago, when I had a change of life, I wasn't necessarily looking for it either. But I needed it. It was what I needed and God knew that. Sometimes we run from God. But God pursues us. God is always behind us. Though millions have come, there is still room for some. There is room at the cross for you. I'm going to read a passage of scripture taken from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. I'm reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. This is when the Israelites were speaking against God and speaking against Moses. Verse 5, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Amen. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And from St. John, chapter 3, yes. verses 14 and 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And also, from the 59th chapter of Isaiah, I'll read the first verse at this time. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father... Our hearts are reaching out to you tonight. 
We realize, Lord, how great a responsibility this is to tell others about Jesus Christ and his love. We are so thankful, Lord, for the day that you look down upon us with mercy and compassion and snatched us out of a life of sin, gave us something to stand on and something to live for. Although the devil rages, my God, and temptation is strong and fierce, we know that there's a God in heaven that cares for every one of us. And your word tells us you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and for the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's old rugged cross. As we sang here tonight, there is power in the blood of Jesus Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit of God will do the work that is necessary in this audience here tonight. You will do the work. The Holy Spirit of God, my Lord, that even tonight some soul may be born of God. Amen. And for what you're going to do, we're going to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Many people in our world tonight seem very comfortable in their lifestyle. Very, very comfortable. Some have denounced God's beautiful way. Yes. Want nothing to do with it at all. Come on now, support what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. That is so. On the other hand, many live very good lives. Good, clean, upright, moral lives. You wouldn't even know that they were not Christians. By the way they live and looking at them. That's all around. And there are those that become very troubled about the way they live. That's what sin does. And there is no human being on the face of this earth that has not sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of of God. That's why Jesus came. Into this world. As I mentioned here in Sunday school this morning. The Bible tells us. That Jesus said in fact. He that is whole. Need not a physician. But he that is sick. It's the same way. In the spiritual application. He came not for the righteous. But to call sinners. To repentance. Which we all were. Yeah. Aren't you glad tonight you listened? Amen. And responded? Yeah. When you heard the voice of God. Calling. Knocking at your heart door. Yes. The, the, now to have a change of life. And receive forgiveness. And a peace of mind. We have to turn to God. This is not a rehabilitation system. It's the Holy Spirit of God that translates a person or transforms a person from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. What a transformation. I thoroughly enjoyed and endorsed the message here this morning. It was a wonderful message. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. And Sister Virginia did an excellent job in preaching that message here this morning. So that provision remains in place today through Jesus Christ. It's just as much in place today as it has ever been ever been for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved that's John 3 and 17 which people don't quote so much they always quote John 3 and 16 and it also says Jesus himself said if any man will come after me let him deny himself. We've got to drop those treasures. 
That little old simple treasure don't mean a thing. You might be surprised what some people's treasure is that keep them away from God. Something so trivial and so simple, sometimes they're very injurious to our bodies. If any man come, if any man will come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. There was a man recorded in this Bible here in the New Testament that was troubled. And he heard about Jesus. He knew about Jesus. He knew he was doing wrong. And the Bible says he wanted to see Jesus. You ever read that story? He wanted to see Jesus. But he was small. So he ran before the crowd. And he got up into a tree. He ran up into a tree. To be sure he would see Jesus. When Jesus got to the tree he looked up. Zacchaeus didn't say a word. Jesus said Zacchaeus. Come down. For today I must abide. At your house. What a transformation. You know what Zacchaeus said? If I have taken anything. From any man. I restore him four times. That's when he got something in you. Hmm? That's when you get God. That's when, it, when it's good. That's the real thing. Zacchaeus well knew. And Jesus didn't know how to say a word to him. Hmm? The Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Listen to the words of this poem written by Myra Brooks Welch. It's called The Touch of the Master's Hand. Brother Ransford Reed used to recite this by heart all the time. He knew every word. "'Twas battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin. But he held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folks? He cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar? A dollar? And then two? Only two? Two dollars? And who'll make it three? Three dollars once? Three dollars twice? And going for three? But no. From the room far back, came a gray-haired man. Uh, from the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then, wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loose strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. The music ceased. The auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars. And who'll make it two? Two thousand. And who'll make it three? Three thousand once. Three thousand twice. And going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried. We do not quite understand what changed its worth. Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin. Is auction cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old 
violin, a mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once and going twice. He's going and almost gone. But the master comes. The master comes. And the foolish crowd never can quite understand the touch, the worth of a soul, and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. What a touch. What a ch touch. In the 59th chapter of Isaiah that I read from tonight, sin appears very sinful, exceedingly sinful. But grace also is, is, seems exceedingly gracious. It's a wonderful chapter. The prophet here in verse 1 rectifies the mistake of those who were saying, that God had not delivered them, even though they were praying and fasting. He was saying that they had no reason to lay the fault on God. God was still as able as ever, but their iniquities was the reason. And if you look at verse 2, which I didn't read, but you understand? Yes. But, it says, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. In verses 3 through 8, the prophet, uh, the prophet exposes in detail to them what he was saying. And I'll just read verse 3. For your hands are defiled with blood. And your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. And your tongue hath muttered perverse, 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 perverseness. Perverseness. Huh? Perverseness. I'm not, I'm not going to read anymore. That's what it says. In John chapter 3 that I read from, after going in to detail with Nicodemus, if you read the accounts of this, this is another one now, Nicodemus. Jesus went on to refer to the sacrifice that it would take to have this new relationship with God. It just didn't happen so. And Sister Virginia mentioned this morning about the price. That salvation is free. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Salvation is free. But it's going to cost you something. Yeah. It costs the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what salvation costs. Yeah. It don't cost us anything. We don't have to buy it. Buy it. But it's going to cost us a surrendering. Yeah. It's going to cost us a leaving behind those old treasures. That hold us back. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where moth doth not corrupt nor steal. Nor anybody can break in and take. For where your treasure is. There will your heart be also. It is plain that God desires a relationship like a father. Yes. And I mentioned here this morning in Sunday school as well, I believe it was, that living for the Lord is a relationship. Yes. It's a companionship. Yes. Huh? Yes. And if you're lonely, call on God. Yes. If you don't have anybody in the house, call on God. Yes. He's a companion. He's a friend. The stick it closer than a brother. When anyone exercises that faith in Jesus Christ, the resulting life can only be as having come from being born 
again. Like he told Nicodemus. He told Nicodemus plain and straight. You must be born again. This was the ruler of the Jews. Who didn't seem to understand it. How can a man be born when he's big? And old? Can he enter again into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said no. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You, you, you see the destruction the wind makes? But you don't see the wind. That's what he went on to say, you know. So is the mystery of the gospel. Let me tell you something, friend. Paul called it a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a wonder. It's a miracle that God can change our old mind and give us a new mind, new ideals, new ambitions, new interests. You don't believe it? Hmm. New thoughts, new aspirations. Let me tell you, I was, I was telling the class there this morning about the first person that was converted in this church under my, ministry, under my pastorate. January 1981, she's still alive. Yes, yeah, she's still here. And another one here, she's not here tonight. That came here for the very first time to visit this church and she was converted. All in 1981. She's still here tonight. When God got a hold of you, let me tell you something. You got an old time dose of salvation. It's going to hold you. Amen. It's going to stay with you. Come on, church. Amen. We have a lot of material things today to enjoy. Huh? Nothing wrong with that. Oh, look, you can go aboard with that too. That can become your treasure. Don't make it become your treasure. Huh? Don't get too fancy. You can leave that too. Yeah, there are many remedies offered today for physical needs. Oh, that's abounding. Especially him, came on. Hmm? But man is unable to free himself from sin. God is the only remedy for that. God is a spirit, the Bible says. And they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why I worked so hard for so many years to try to hold that standard up here in this congregation. And up to now I've been successful. Hold it. Don't let it go. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The, 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 the text in Isaiah referred to his hands. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. Hands are used symbolically. God doesn't have physical hands. And, but the Bible does refer to hands you know, in all different places. It, it speaks of his creative work. Yes, uh, his creative work. If you look in, in, in the book of Psalms, I'll take a few more minutes. In, in verse 25, it says then, Psalms 102, Of all thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Imagine. Huh? It speaks of his governing hand. Yes, God is our ruler, you know. And if you look in Psalms 40, you will see there, Psalm, not Psalms, Isaiah, brother, Isaiah chapter 40, you will see it there in verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, Amen. and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. The book of Deuteronomy, Moses said, The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Let me tell you something, friend. You don't know it all. We don't know it all. 
We'll never know it all. But we know enough to hide under his wings. And they were singing here this morning. Under his wings, I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me. And I am his child. Do not let the devil intimidate you. That's a wonderful Sunday school lesson this morning. Don't let the devil intimidate you either. Yes, it speaks about his delivering hand. He delivered Israel many times. It speaks about his renewing hand. Uh, you'll find that in Philippians, I believe. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Thank God for this word. Hmm? You love the word? You love the word? Philippians 2 and verse 13. For it is God. It is God which worketh in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Let me tell you a little secret. If you had listened to the devil, you wouldn't have come to church. God had something to do with that. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Huh? If I'm not here, I'm home. Excuse me, I'm telling you the facts. Only place I am is home. Necessity causes that sometime now. Life changes when you get old. You listen to what I'm saying. You're not, you're not always young. You'll get old if you live. When you get old, all kinds of things happen. Yes, for it is, the, it is, of, it is God which worketh in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. His purpose in the restoration plan was to make us over into what we could never be alone. We hear the song about broken pieces. Hmm? You ever heard about the song, the broken pieces? Pick up the broken pieces. And bring them back to the Lord. Yes. Pick up the broken pieces. God can put them back together. And mend those broken pieces back together. That's what he does. He took a man by the name of Manasseh. The son of Hezekiah. Who had turned to idolatry. And so on. And tendered his heart. Let me take you to the book of the Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 33, and you will see it there. Verses 12 and 13. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord, his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication. And brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. You believe that's God tonight? Hmm? You believe that's a God tonight? Yes. He took Rahab, who was a barroom keeper, they call it today. A tavern keeper. And made her a mother in Israel. And she died in the faith. Yes. Rahab. Reading the Old Testament. I'll go on to that tonight. That's another story. But let me tell you something friend. There is nothing God can do. Yes. Huh? Yes. And if you look into Hebrews chapter 11. You will see it there. In verse 31, let's bring the word right out. Yes. By faith, the harlot Rahab, yes. I'm reading the Bible, yes. perish not with them that believe not. 
when she had received the spies with peace. It's a wonderful story. In the Old Testament there. Read it when you go home tonight. Read it when you go home. He took a persecutor of Christians, a partaker in martyrdom by the name of Saul, and made him the greatest missionary ever walked this earth, who was later called Paul. And Sister Virginia spoke of him here this morning as well. Give a good account in the short time she had. You can hardly preach without mentioning Paul. Huh? You can hardly preach without mentioning Paul. And when we started going and complaining in life, remember Paul. Huh? Remember Paul. Remember Paul. When you're not going to eat, Paul suffered hunger. Huh? Nakedness. Without clothes. Per dangers in the city. Dangers on the ocean. Shipwreck. Um, delivered by a piece of broken wood floating into land. Huh? Read about him in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, I believe, when he go home too. Paul gave an account of what he went through himself. God changed this man around. Remember what I'm reading, what I'm speaking about tonight? Looking for a change of life. Let me tell you, a change of life is real. It is real, it is real, it is real. A change of life is real. God does that. <coughs> he listened, Jesus listened to the cries of a poor blind man by the side of the road and gave him his sight. What a change. Hmm? What a change. It's not only sin. He did, he did a lot of things besides deliver people from sin. Yes. Huh? He made the lame to walk. Yes. He made the lame to run. Yes. He unstopped the deaf ears. He opened the blind eyes. Yes. And that's a wonderful story, the, the story of blind Bartimaeus. The crowd became embarrassed because he was called not on Jesus. He, so he knew Jesus was the pastor there too. And when Jesus got to the place, he stopped. One human soul attracted the attention of Jesus Christ Amen. along the road among the masses of people. Amen. And he took off his old tattered robe to talk to Jesus. Amen. What will you have me to do that I might receive my sight, sir? And Jesus healed him and he followed the master. So many people in our world have vowed to God what they would do if he did something for them. And when he did it, they left him out. Never remember that vow no more. Yes. He healed the woman in the crowd. Huh? The Bible says this woman was sick for 12 solid years. And she spent every dollar she had on physicians. This Bible says it. And she got worse. It wouldn't have been so bad if she had been... Leveled off. But she got worse. But she heard about Jesus. I don't know how big she was. The Bible doesn't say. But it was a big crowd of people. She didn't worry about the crowd. She wiggled through. She wiggled through the crowd. And touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? What you got on my body? He looked at the woman and he said, Woman, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. He delivered the restless demoniac from his misery. We've talked about it in Sunday school this morning too. You remember? Yes, this man was miserable. Life was nothing to him. What a mess. Left his home and his children and his wife sleeping in the graveyard. Among the tombs, the Bible says. Misery. 
But when Jesus stepped from that little boat on that beach, he met this man. This man met him. Let me tell you, Jesus, Jesus rebuked those devils of that man and set him free. The Bible says he went home in his right mind. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. There's a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stream. I'm going to ask the part down the room there to put on its reel to close this service with. My beloved friends, I can't save you. None of us can save you. But Jesus can. God can. We come to God through Jesus, not through Brother James. We come to God through Jesus. No man, Jesus said, can come to me except the Father draw him. So as we sing this song tonight, if, if you want a change of life, it might be that you want it, but if you need a change of life, God can change your life. Let us stand. Oh, how well do I remember how I doubted day by day For I did not know for certain That my sins were washed away When the Spirit tried to tell me I would not the truth receive I endeavored to be happy And to make myself but it's real, it's real. Is there one here tonight? Oh, one single one. I know it's real. Praise God, the doubts are settled. When the truth came close and searching, listen to these words, friends. For I did not have the witness of the Spirit bright and clear. If at times the coming judgment would appear for my mind, oh, it need be uneasy, for God's smile I could not find. Is there one here tonight? One. That's one. It's real. It's real, friends. It's real. Just before we sing anymore, some people think that they have to clean up their life before they come to God. But that's not the case. No. You come to God, He clean you up. Yes. He, he will clean you up. Yes. When He clean you up, you're cleaned up. Yes. That is it. Yes. When I come tonight, friend, forget the past life. Yes. Turn a new leaf. Turn a brand new life. Begin a brand new life over. Brand new life. Become a, a citizen of the community with uprightness and Genuine listen. What God has done for you, why not come? It's real. Sing on.
I can say like Paul did, I have not shunned. I declare unto you the go whole gospel of God. We are never satisfied, but the Holy Spirit did his job. I did mine, the rest of it was yours. There will be service here on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, the Lord willing. I would mind if as many of the members of the congregation as possible be here to please come. This coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Thank you. I want to be quick to thank the Lord for the beautiful message that Brother James brought to us. Looking for a change of life. And he get, laid it out quite clearly, the changes. So we have a full week ahead of us. Let us ponder the message and keep it in our heart. And share with others the good news of God. Brother Isaac, can I ask you to come to the podium and close the service in prayer for me, please? Our Father in heaven, we thank you tonight for meeting with us. We thank you, dear Lord, for the change that salvation brings to our lives, dear Lord. And those that have sat or listened to this 
message tonight, dear Lord. We pray that you will help them, dear Lord, that they will ponder in their hearts, dear Lord, and that they will search their hearts, dear Lord, and seek after you, dear Lord. It is not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to you, dear Lord. So, Lord, I pray that your mercies, your compassion, your spirit, dear Lord, will visit with them and help them, dear Lord, that they will surrender before it's too late. Thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us in this service and for all that was said and done and for the songs and for the inspiration, dear Lord, that we gain from being here. We pray that you'll go with us this week. Keep us in your care, dear Lord. Watch over us and keep us in your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.